I lived in St. Paul, Minnesota for two years, and it was insane. My legs once froze on a two-block walk to a liquor store. They, <laughs> they, they literally froze. I'd never experienced like you spit and it, it freezes on a fence. Wind chill is, is what will when the temperature is zero and it's 20 miles an hour wind and it's minus 20. That's, yeah, that's cold. That's the difference. Here, if you if your car breaks down, you got to call AAA. People come out. It's inconvenient. Out there, they do like news things where they'd say, if you break down without a survival kit, you'll die. Yeah. And they're serious about it. You're on your own. Good luck. Not happening. So, uh, what are we, a third of the way in? I almost don't want to talk basketball with you because you're a fun guy. But third, have, to, have you found a tennis partner yet? I have. Okay. Yes. Found, found a couple tennis games to hit around. And nice to be home for a couple weeks. You know, in a, December, I think I saw my wife three days, yeah. you know, for the last six weeks, so it's nice to be home and see the kids and see the home crowd, and uh, our guys love playing at home. It's every, every team that comes in for the first time can't get over how nice it is. You know, Eric Spolster was like, holy cow, yes. yeah. you know, this is fantastic, so. And everybody knows and feels the passion when they come here as a visiting team, and, and I think that all that stuff is very, very positive. You know, you can be a coach in another sport. It, it, I guess it's kind of cool where the NBA is concerned that when you're coaching, because, again, our kids are around the same age. You, Your kids are in school, whereas, like, baseball, you're gone all summer. Right. It still sucks, but yet at least there's stuff going on there. I would imagine – I know a lot of people will have their kids join in summer. You can't have family really join you during the year at all on the road, can you? No. Yeah. No, you know, you're up. I think, you know, when you're, you're playing a baseball game, you're going to be in that city for three or four days. Right. You know what I mean? And uh, it's a little bit different. Um, their season's so long. Like, to have one yeah. day off a month, ooh. and then they play all their makeup, their rainout days, you know, rain, rainout games, exactly. makeup dates on that one. So, uh, yeah, it's a grind, but, uh, yeah, we're in and out of one city to the next, so it's, you know, you don't have them come. Plus, they're in school, like you said. So, you enjoy your time in the off season. There's little pockets of, pockets of stillness, as yeah. my meditation coach says. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it is what it is. It's just the season has a, 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 when the season's over, then you've got a couple weeks, and then you've got the draft, and then you've got a week or two, and then you've got summer league, and sure. then you've got a couple weeks, and then all of a sudden you're back to September 1. i got to ask you about basketball, but I'm just going to be a dumb fan. It, I was at the game last night. I'm just going to be – Ask away. Fire away. I won't answer the, the questions anyway. I'm not asking about <laughs> trades or anything like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Why is it that – and this was before you got here. I know it's not as simple as don't leave the three-point shooter guy open, but it just seems that there's something in the water here where three-point shooters for other teams, it's like they, they lick their lips, they lick their chops, and they go at it. I know it's more complicated than that, mm -hmm. but why is it more complicated than don't leave the shooter? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's lots, there's, there's uh, interesting conversation because First of all, you have to look at the player. Mm -hmm. uh, is the player athletic enough to do two things, which is to run out to a guy, not let him get a shot, and not let him just blow by him? The uh, penetration of doing that, then somebody has to help because nobody wants to give up layups. That's the best shot in the right. game. And then uh, the ball gets you know banged around a little bit. Secondly, when you're struggling uh, to get wins as a team or as a franchise, there are the repercussions of a shooter coming in and going, I'm going to take a bad shot or two. I'm going to really find my rhythm. I'm, you know what I mean? I, it's yeah. not going to matter because we're going to beat them anyways. Right. See, that mindset, when you play free and loose against a team you, you perceive to be lesser, yeah. is, is runs through since we're five years old. If you, if, you know what I mean? Yes. It's just a mindset of, man, we're supposed to win tonight. You know, I'm just going to get them up. And so I think... You know, that, that can be, uh, and, that, you know, that's what we're working hard to change, that, you know, when you come in here, you know, we're going to put our hands on you and, uh, you know, get after you defensively. So that's what we're working on. Is that part of what people say, culture change? Is that is that part of that, or is that a completely? It's, all, yeah. it's all part of it. You know, there's plenty of discussion about referees all the time, right? When I was in yeah. Memphis when we won 22 games, and it seemed that we didn't get calls. And then we got to the playoffs. We added Zach Randolph. Our young guys got older. Our work ethic of going out and just grinding and, and not saying a word and just keep our head down and all of a sudden you get a couple playoff wins and then it seems like 
point, referees may or may not look at you differently. And, it, and it, obviously, they're all good referees. They're all the same. They officiate every game the same and every yeah. team the same and all of those kinds of things. But you just feel like the, the breaks kind of come your way a little bit as you progress. Um, and that's part of culture. And, and just it's, the, it's, a, it's a large amount of energy required and, uh, and some patience. And I'm sure our Kings, yeah. <laughs> Kings fans are like, please don't say the P word. But it's just, it's just a work in progress. Yeah, I followed your career a lot, and I, you're probably not happy about this, but earlier in the week I put out a stat. I was doing math, which I'm not good at. You were exactly the same after the Miami game. You were exactly the same record this year as you were the first year you coached the Grizzlies. Yeah, Katie mentioned that the other night in Denver. Oh, did she? Yeah. She you, of... And you finished 50 and 32 that year, and mm -hmm. I think Mark Gasol being out might have had something to do with it. Just a little. A little, little bit. A little bit. Do you know this team yet? Like, do you know them? Are you still? Oh, just, yeah. You do. Mm -hmm. If I were to ask you, is this a playoff team or is this a team that just happens to mathematically be in the eighth spot? Is there even an answer to that? Yeah. Yeah. Guys are trying hard, playing as hard as they can, competing, and uh, just trying to get better every day, stay together, and, and build something that, you know, can last for, uh, you know, several years. This is hopefully a group that is remembered. And maybe it won't be, and maybe it will be, but as a team that, you know, kind of put a stop to certain things and, uh, you know, you think back, oh, five years from now, go, like, yeah, that's that. You know, that was that Ty Lawson. Man, he was, he just played with so much heart. That Garrett Temple, they played with so much heart. They scrapped on every night, no matter what we had. That Matt Barnes, you know, DeMarcus grabs those guys, and they grab him, and they arm and arm, and if we don't have enough, we don't have enough, but we went to battle every night. And the, you'll, those are the guys you'll remember or not, you know, like I said, sure. Uh, hopefully several years from now. We're going to wrap up with Dave Yeager so we can uh, bowl. Uh, you, the most popular question we get about you, on the show is Matt, about Matt Barnes. You obviously have a trust factor with Matt. Sometimes the fans, and sometimes radio hosts, don't understand minutes and why this guy's playing. But isn't there a little bit more behind the scenes as far as Matt hasn't been healthy this year? And I don't want to make excuses for anything, but it seems like you've kind of been in a rock and a hard place trying to fit him in and take care of him at the same time. Yeah, it's been it's been it's been a little bit difficult because um, you know Rudy's been out. 10 of the last 12 games, yeah. 10 of the last 11 games. So um, guys have to be in different positions. And, um, you know, I had at, or before Christmas, before before Rudy, and I was trying to give him a game here, a game here, and sure. we haven't been able to do that. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, most effective as a, as a bench guy, an energy guy, uh, cutter, uh, ball movement, small ball group guy, uh, and is having to take one for the team and, and try to go out and guard front line guys that are, 12 years his junior every single night and then and, and, uh, you know the guy never never runs from uh, from competition and and doesn't matter where we are those guys are so competitive and, and that's got to that's part of who you become and who you are last thing for you there's not enough accountability sometimes in the media and I'm sitting right here with you I don't mind saying when Ty Lawson missed a flight to Kentucky I did I didn't want him on the team anymore I was I was pissed I know you're trying to do a culture change you kept him you stood by him Man, I don't want to jinx anything, but, God, he has looked awesome this year. He really has shown flashes of the old Ty Lawson. And that's going to make you proud as somebody that you kind of stood up for and stood behind to see him follow through and kind of repay your trust. Yeah, he, he's, uh, he's been super. You know, um, he's great in the locker room, and uh, guys know, like I said, he'll go out and compete uh, every single night. Um, you know, I think 90% of the stuff is inaccurate that's out there, and so nobody knows what really goes on, and then, you know, I could run myself uh, ragged all night long thinking about what people say and what's going on out in the media. But I know what was going on. And so each individual case is its own deal. Sure. You know what I mean? And, and otherwise, that's why, to me, like less rules are, are more because each one is how you dole out consequences in your program. Uh, the more rules you have, the more, well, you did it to Dave, and then but you didn't do it. You know, look, right. each deal is its own individual deal, and, and uh, you just try to work with guys. You know how to bowl. Uh, everybody knows how to bowl. I'm just saying. It's, it's, it's at what level are you effective? Do you need the bumpers or not, I guess? That's my level, bumpers or no bumpers. Yeah, analytically, I, I think I'm much better <laughs> <laughs> with the bumpers. I think the analytics <laughs> bear that out. Well, uh, long season ahead. Uh, it should be fun. Kings fans are up and down, too. But, uh, hey, you know what? At least we're competitive almost every night. Uh, no, Kings fans are fantastic. The, the passion, and you can feel it. You know, 
there's some tiredness to losing. Sure. You know what I mean? And we're all excited about the new arena. And yep. okay, here comes a new coach, and we got a couple new players. And you know what's going to happen uh, five months from now? And you know, is it the playoffs this year or not? Or is, yep. it, is it next year? And next year we're going to have seven new players, and we're going to be kind of starting all over again. Yep. Um, and it's just a work in progress. And uh, I appreciate that everybody's sticking with it. And I know it's been tough. It's, t- it's been tough on the players that have been here yeah. for three, four, five, six years. So we're trying. We're trying. Appreciate you. Have fun. Love out you, there. brother. All right. Thanks. Take, take care, coach. That's Dave Yeager, everybody.